Hey, it's me Roland and you are watching Bilingual Analytics. Thanks for tuning in today. In today's video, I would like to show you a practical guide about data flows in Power BI for business users. You may consider this as a data flow 101 for all the non-tech people. While this is just an intro session into data flows, I plan to record a few more videos on how to best utilize them in your business environment. If you are interested in the topic, make sure to hit the subscribe button and you will never miss a new tutorial. Let me start with the data flow definition by Microsoft. This is from Microsoft website and you can see that they call a collection of tables that are created and managed in the Power BI service a data flow. You can read more about this by clicking on the link in the info box below. But what does that mean for us, analysts or actual business users? Well, in layman's term, Dataflow is essentially Power Query Online. It allows us to connect to different data or data sources. Once we have a connection to the source, we can transform our data. I mean, we can pivot, unpivot and add or remove columns, just like what we can do in Power BI Desktop using Power Query. And when all of this data cleansing is done, we can use Dataflow as a source in Power BI Desktop to create beautiful and, more importantly, insightful reports. If you are familiar with the IT expression of ETL or Extract, Transform and Load, you can see that Dataflows can help with business-driven ETLs. But hey, enough of me talking here. Let's head over to Power BI Service and see how to create a Dataflow. Here I am on my Dataflow 101 workspace and I'm going to click on New at the top left corner and select Dataflow to prep, clean and transform data. I reckon many of you got to this point while exploring this topic, but the next screen is where you probably stop. It could be a little bit overwhelming to know which option to choose, especially if you're new to all of this. Let me tell you something, if you just want to start somewhere, Click on Add New Tables and the next screen will be much more familiar. You see, I told you, this is Power Query Online. You have the same GUI to use and similar connectors to start from, just like in Power Query within Power BI. We can connect to an Excel workbook, to a SharePoint folder, or even a SQL Server database and of course a few more other data sources from this list. But today I'm going to focus on the SharePoint folder connector as I have a very specific real-life example that I would like to share with you. Do you want to know what made me tweet this at the beginning of 2022? It all started with a small project where I finally had a chance to explore data flows. I had plans to create a new report for the team and update, refresh and maintain that report, adding one more task to my list of responsibilities. However, as it sometimes happens, priorities have changed and I ended up not having enough time to do any of that. I'm pretty sure that you have experienced this before. Hit the like button below if you know what I'm talking about. Then somewhere in the middle of 2021, I had this thought, maybe. I should hand over some responsibility to the users when it comes to this report. We discussed that and they were quite happy to own the report given that I can provide an easy to use interface for them to do the updates and refreshes. So the idea was born. Let's do all of this in OneDrive and create a data flow that picks up data, transforms it into a shape that makes sense for us and connect the Power BI report to that data flow. This would allow me to create the report once and then let my business users manage report refreshes and even dimension table adjustments. Come and I show you how easy it is to create this setup. Here we are in my dummy data flow folder where I have dim tables and data files. For sake of simplicity and because this is data flow 101, I'm going to use Excel files import from a OneDrive folder. Under data files, I have a super simple data set for 2021 as a whole year and data for January and February 2022. If I click on the file, you can see that I have stripped out all the unnecessary bits and pieces and we only have some key fields, quantity and date. And if we head back to the dim tables, that's where I have a customer and the product table with all the details.
Once again, this is just a quick demo with a simple structure that many of you can use as a starting point. Now I'm back in my workspace and it's time to import the two DIM tables and my files from the folder. I need the SharePoint folder connector as OneDrive and SharePoint are kind of the same thing now. For the site URL, I just copy and paste the root URL of my OneDrive location and I sign in using my account. After I click on next, I can see all the files I have in my root folder. Let's just start by transforming the data, as I only need a handful of these files. And look at this, all of this, it looks familiar, right? Again, this is Power Query Online. You can remove columns or rows, use first rows as headers, change data types, and heaps more that you would normally do with Power Query. There are a handful of features that are premium only, such as merge or append queries, AI insights, and generally speaking, those steps where you would use calculation, like creating an mcode based calendar table based on fact table dates. But to be honest with you, I don't think that it is super restrictive. Now, let's go back to transforming our data. I'm only going to use the GUI to demonstrate how easy it is to connect to a source and get that data cleansed. Step 1 is to filter down the folder path to data flow files. Step 2 is to filter the name of the files to data. And step 3 is to combine these files. Once again, we get the same Power Query experience using the first file to pick up data from and an Excel spreadsheet. Let's just click OK. Dataflow or Power Query created the sample file, the parameter, and the function to allow us to combine and transform the raw data files. As a final step here, let's just rename the query to data and click on save and close. Power Query Online then validates the query and asks us to name our data flow. I'm just going to call it data flow 101. You can also add some sort of a description to it and I would highly encourage you to do that as these data flows can be shared across the whole organization, meaning that a good description can speed up the data consumption experience. And to ensure that you have data in the data flow, you have to click on Refresh now. Congratulations! You just witnessed a data flow creation. And it only took a few minutes using Power Query Online GUI. With all these different features and names in BI tools, it could be overwhelming to know when to use which one. I hear you. I was also hesitant to use data flows for a while until I found a good use case. Since then, I'm a huge fan. But wait, so far we have only covered how to connect to a data source and how to transform our data using Power Query Online. So you might ask the question, Roland, how can I use data flows in my report? I'm glad you asked. Now, it's time to head over to Power BI Desktop and import tables or queries from our data flow. Using data flows in Power BI reports is super easy. We need to click on Get Data, then More. Search for data flow, and even though our knee-jerk reaction would be to use Power BI data flows, I was told by the great Alex Powers that Dataflows or Power Platform Dataflows should be used. Reasons for this can be found in the article about Power Query Connectors in the info box below. After we jump that hurdle, we can select workspaces as we created our Dataflow in a workspace called Dataflow 101 and select the tables or queries we want to import. As you see, I also imported the customer and the product dimension tables using the same logic with SharePoint Online folders. Do you know what's the best part? All the data massaging has already happened within the data flow, 
so users of the data flow can just simply load the data. There is no need to transform it. Isn't that fantastic for those who are not great data modelers? They can just use the data as is. Even though we imported clean data to our model, there are still a few more steps to do. We need to set up relationships, build a calendar table and create some database. With some video editing magic, I'm going to cut to the point where all of that is sorted. Great, we have everything sorted and now I can publish this report to the service. But we are not done yet. Here comes the best part. The data flow that we have created is cloud-based. The raw data or fact table and dimension tables that we pick from OneDrive are also cloud-based. It means that when new data comes in, users can add that to the OneDrive folder and refresh the report without opening Power BI Desktop. Let me repeat that. Business users can refresh reports based on all the smarts that we have implemented in the data flow without needing to know how or what is going on. I still advise you to involve them as much as you can, but they don't have to understand all the data cleansing steps or write M code. Isn't that great? One of the elements in this report is a card to show the last date in the report. It helps to show the last date when the report was updated. Let's head back to OneDrive and add March 2022 data to our folder. Back to the data flow and hit refresh. Now that we have our data flow refreshed, it's time to refresh the data set. Before we do that, there is one small setup to fix. Let's dive into the settings of the data set and under data source credentials, just log in again. This will allow users to refresh the data set. Just keep in mind the credential used here are going to be the same that we used to create the report, meaning that in this example it will be my details. After that adjustment, we can refresh the dataset. Lastly, jump into the report and click on refresh. And bam, we have March data in the report. Alrighty, we covered a lot today, I know. However, I really wanted to show you a full-blown project that you can easily replicate in your day job to start utilizing data flows. If you're stuck at any stage, just pause the video, maybe rewind one chapter and watch it again. I try to structure these chapters the way you would tackle this problem in real life. If all fails, comment below and I try my best to help. Let's talk about some of the benefits of introducing data flows to your analytics platform or reporting suite. It is a cloud-based solution, meaning that you can access your data anywhere, anytime. It also means that you can use any kind of PC or laptop, even a not that beefy one. Data flows can provide a real single source of truth. In a business environment, having the same data in all reports is critical. You don't want report users to start questioning results because of incorrect data usage. With data flows, you can say goodbye to inconsistent result. At least, not because of data issues. Reusing data has never been so easy. And not just any kind of data. We are talking about clean data that the analytics department has already transformed to a nice shape. Sharing data is also super easy. You can even certify and or promote a data flow to make it easier to find for other users within the organization. The data flow connector is a superior data source in Power BI Desktop. It means that you can achieve significantly quicker report refresh times. If you want to learn more about that, check out my dedicated playlist where I try to find the best possible connector to use. Automate report updates or refreshes. If you have the source data in the cloud, or on-prem data access is achieved with a gateway, you can set up scheduled refreshes to pick up data. This means that report users may not even need to click on the refresh buttons. Just log in and they should be good to go. Handing over reports to the business. All of the previous points allow the analytics department 
to reduce their workload and spend more time actually analyzing data rather than working at the report creator factory. If you are part of the analytics team, I'm pretty sure that all of this sounds like the perfect dream to you. Am I right? Of course, with such great power comes great responsibility. Or I should rather say, as always, there is a place and use case for data flows. If you want to learn more about data flows, hear about some best practices that I have explored, make sure to come back to my channel as I'm working on lots of data flow content. But before you go, I would like to share with you a quote from Benjamin Franklin that you, as an analyst who work with the business, should always keep in mind. Tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. This is especially true when you start handing over responsibilities to your business users. Try to be more than just a machine who hands over reports. Include them in the process, some may even want to learn how to adjust bits and pieces. This way you upscale your users and who knows, maybe train a couple of super users in the process. Thanks for tuning in today, I hope that you learned something new and interesting from today's video and you will be able to implement this for your report. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave or before you watch one from the above videos. Until the next one, see ya!